yes, I'm using the extended edition, but mostly just for this opening scene. It's phenomenal, and cutting it was insane. It's one of the most lush and photorealistic dinosaur scenes in all of film, let alone the Jurassic series, and it introduces the Giganotosaurus to us as a threat to the T-Rex, something we wouldn't even consider without. But otherwise, the theatrical cuts a lot of the chaff very well. But we also get to see Dreadnoughtus in its natural habitat before they come up again later, also Quetzalcoatlus messing with other pterosaurs and pseudoceratops in big family units before Ellie meets the orphan. Like I said, great sequence. And when a bird roars, you know it's nothing to mess with. Also thanks Dino Dana for nailing Quetzalcoatlus pronunciation for Jude years ago. Bumpy's family, yeah we watch a lot of dino stuff. All of it, in fact. Like I said in my Jurassic Park video, we need more dino movies. Ha! Obi Raptor eating eggs. Way to know the etymology of your name. Well played, dinosaur, well played. <laughs> and introduce the Giga they do. Listen to the sound design, it rumbles. And they gave him a very evil looking face while making our hero, Proto Rexy, all fuzzy and lovable. And he also supplants Proto Rexy as the apex pretty easily. Classic. My first experience with Jurassic Park was at the drive in since I was eight and someone told my mom a dude gets eaten off the toilet. And it's still Rexy. You can see the raptor scratches. You're welcome, Lucas? I know this isn't everyone's fave, but can we all agree this motif is a fantastic addition to the classic theme? The animals are unpredictable, and when hungry, extremely violent. After our first viewing, Jude and I watched the deleted Allosaurus scene, Battle at Big Rock, and it's another that I can't believe was deleted. I know they were both on YouTube early, but this has real Spielberg terror vibes. It would have been the most frightening scene in the movie, and eh, maybe that's why it was cut. You just don't need to put a baby in this much danger. Although, props to this kid's crossbow aim, even if she'll need therapy from here on out. What a fun progression for Claire, from calling the animals it, to running some kind of foundation to try to save those animals from a volcano, to Claire goes full ALF, vigilante on the run. Well, that'll give you a sense of their size and strength. Aren't you and Owen still like a weird thing? It's not that weird. Uh, he meant like surprising. A great surprise and agreed. We're all thankful. Take note, Hollywood. I like these reintroductions for Claire and Owen. They're both doing what they can do for the dino world, both involve chases, but just because they're doing those things separately doesn't mean they can't still be together. It's very mature of you writers. I'm definitely not going to make this a compare and contrast video. I've just seen the extended so many times now, I was surprised this scene of Delacorte was cut. We just get a zoom on his face so we know he's watching Owen. What I like better is that now the Parasaurolophus gets to live. Look, dinosaurs living among us I can buy, but a 12 year old splitting that knotty piece of firewood with what looks like a Grand Forestbrook forest axe or possibly a Holtzbrook felling axe, both of which are chopping axes. You can split with either, just like you can eat bisque with a fork, but it's gonna suck and also not that piece. But rep and scandy axes? Aren't you a win, friend? What a tragic but still beautiful moment. They're just lost animals in the wrong millennia. Take a guess who's her fave. Moms always get the rough jobs. Seriously though, take notes. Let people stay together between movies. We're all here for it. Love the single parent coming home from work music here. Also, is she knocking with Alan's favorite claw? The one that he thought was used to slash prey, but it may have been for stabbing or even just helped in climbing and obviously tapping the floor to let your clone baby know you're home. They've really done an amazing job of turning what might have been the scariest part of my childhood into something pretty adorbs. Cut away from yourself. Probably would have told her that before handing her the knife, but Mario has his reasons. Whoa! That is a sick knife trick though, and I've only cut myself a dozen or so times trying. I know, locusts aren't technically dinos, but this terror moment feels like it's straight out of one of the books. They use biosyn seed. See, I want to make a cute little Monsanto joke here, but I'll get 30 angry comments talking about how I can't keep politics out of my videos and I have no way of knowing what's political for some of you anymore. Like, is being anti-Agent Orange and DDT too based now? Hey, at least the movie has stopped pretending like it's not talking about the thing it's very clearly talking about. Ellie Stadler. Alan Grant, you look the same. Doesn't he though? I just don't understand what magic these two are doing. Sam Neill is 75. Laura Dern is 55, but she could be in her 40s and he could be in his 50s. I just don't get it. Did you drink Tim and Lex's blood to stay young? Can I get you something in a beer? Or... Maybe not at 10 a.m. But... Ellie has clearly never been to a one-year-old's birthday party. <laughs> what? You know what? That's normal. Please don't call DCF on me. And Mark? It's over. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, so, so sorry. I, I really just, he, he was nice. Feeling really sad for you about that. Should we go to dinner? I need to go to their sanctuary and get DNA from another locust there, but I need a witness. <laughs> what he doesn't know is it'll be a witness in the Mad Max Fury roadway. I mean, I'd read it. And he just happened to invite you out of the blue. He said there were things I'd want to see. Good old Ian still hitting on Ellie, even though Alan clearly made it clear that they had a relationship 30 years ago. 
You never get used to it. It's pretty heartwarming that even Ellie is still blown away by it all. You know Blue was watching that whole time. Such a good clone mama. She had a baby. That's impossible. Clearly, you haven't met Ian yet. She won't hurt us, right? Oh, you damn right she will. No, she won't. You've got that hand up. Maisie? Clever girl. Honestly, the fact that they showed up with a net, a shotgun, and a crappy pickup and got away from the mother raptor with its child is pretty impressive. Maybe a little lucky with that clip. I mean, they gotta die. Going after kids means you die. Even dino kids, but still, eh, impressive. Marlins wouldn't be my go-to for really anything, but the silver finish on that lever action 1895 SBL is fire. And made by Ruger now anyway. I am gonna get her back. <laughs> I think that was Raptor for nothing better, you little meat slurpee. These locusts in Nebraska are about to wrap it up. It's Caleb. This is how I found out that a random comedian I follow on Twitter is also an actor. Promise me you won't go in there with your vest and mess everything up. <laughs> his vest. He needs his vest. Where would he put all his hands? Don't get killed, okay? Living advice. But he's exactly the way you'd want him to be. I mean, how much time you spent with him? <laughs> uh, well, I know that was sarcastic, but honestly, not enough. That might be my favorite line in the whole movie. The trope where the protagonist says something snarky or sarcastic, but only the audience is in on the joke has always bugged me. So Ramsey just calling it what it is is refreshing. Not to mention, Ramsey picked him as a person he could trust and was right. Most of the new bar dinosaurs are here too. It took Fish and Wildlife three years to catch the T-Rex. Rexy is the longest living character of any movie ever. I don't even need to confirm it. Is that Dreadnoughtus? <gasps> you know how I know Alan knows his stuff? Because there's Brachiosaurus, Brontosaurus, Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, Argentiniosaurus, Dreadnoughtus. They're all long-necked dinos or sauropods. And yeah, one is Arlo and one of them has a bump on their nose. Otherwise... <laughs> But, fun fact in researching this win, I learned that Brontosaurus wasn't a dinosaur for a while, and now it apparently is again. Science is neat. Your name means fear nothing. Yes, you know that. <laughs> Dang, is Ramsey the most genuine character in this movie? Mama Duathi isn't getting the credit he deserves. Oh, the apex predator. Giganotosaurus, at least for now. Ha! Because Giganotosaurus wasn't discovered until the year the OG came out, so who knows what they'll find next? Also, because of Giganotosaurus, there was no way Jude was going to let us let him miss this one. Do you know how much voltage was in the electric fences at Jurassic Park? Yeah. Makes you wonder. People know the general story of events, but did Tim ever do an interview in his teens called Revisiting Terror, where he talks about how Grant saved his life after getting thrown from the fence? Something tells me they made that 11-year-old sign an NDA. I wouldn't be anywhere else. Would you? No. And part of what I love about Ramsey so much is that he has a touch of that socially awkward savant thing going on that Dodgson has in spades. But it's like Ramsey's learned to adapt in a way that Dodgson hasn't and probably doesn't care to. Ramsey, he's basically a young me, only smarter and taller. Better hair, better clothes, isn't trying to end the world for profit, otherwise samesies. Also, Dodgson sucks, just the epitome of suckage. We not only lack dominion. We don't lack dominion, it's right here, I'm watching, oh. They pressed the button and hoped for the best. He's legit saying the same thing he was 30 years ago and he's still a rock star. But that same power could devastate the food supply. You know, or other totally hypothetical things that you aren't all definitely contributing to by working here. Do you two talk a lot? Uh, he slid into my DMs. <laughs> he's the only one who knows what that means. Wu has looked better, but he is coming in hot with a strong cardigan game. We want control. There's no such thing. What? 30-year character growth? The kind of control you're attempting is, uh, it's not possible. Huh, adding Malta to my bucket list. You're American. Doesn't that make us friends? No, but I heard you like redheads. What's the cargo? Atrociraptors. Atro, atro, atrociraptors. What does that even mean? Atros, huh. Savage thief. Wonder what they steal. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. Somewhere in Italy, Malcolm is whispering, life uh, finds a way. <laughs> okay, respect to the filmmakers for that. Owen is gonna try the hands up thing to every dino, but a Carnotaurus and an Allosaurus aren't gonna care. Especially if it's Toro, although I, I think he had an implant last time I checked. Camp Cretaceous is wild. They're eating the guy who was on fire in the background. Someone made a comment on my Jurassic Park video that when Alan says this, T-Rex doesn't want to be fat, he wants to hunt. That it's completely false, and I agree. No predator alive would pass up a free meal proven here. Hunting carries a ton of risks and energy expenditure, but it also doesn't mean they won't get bored. <laughs> Dang, Miss Casey is going hairy on these Hendersons. It's a thing now. Okay, okay, listen. <laughs> the off-screen throw is fantastic and a borderline jump scare. You don't use it on people. I mean, you're not supposed to cut people with knives either. Don't gatekeep combat. Hey, I've seen that shot before. Did that Atrociraptor just pull a Jason Bourne window jump? See, you're always gonna try it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. They, uh, 
They do this a lot, huh? Without even watching it yet, I know Honest Trailers is gonna do a supercut of everyone holding their hands up for their fake credits. Ah, brought back the old classic, own on a bike with raptors, but less friendly this time. <laughs> Tight dodge, though. <laughs> Close lined him with the resourcefulness. Well, that's it. The dinos have spoken. Those scooters that are all over cities now have to go. Pull over. That's not how planes work. <laughs> A plus delivery. <laughs> well, that was exhilarating. Would you guys like to tour the facilities yourselves? Elevators are down this hall. Not, not those. Need special clearance to get down there. Oh. I love how he's setting them up to get what they need and even telling them where to go in a way the cameras wouldn't catch. Charlotte, be careful. Yeah, I will. This line makes more sense when you see this little guy do this in the extended gut. A butterfly flew into my office this morning. See, and there's your lasting impact on Ian talking about the butterfly effect. It's Dave. Hello there. Oh, what did you think was gonna happen? To be fair, you said you needed a witness, not a patsy. Next to Blue, Beta looks teensy tiny, but alone? Yeah, that's a border collie sized monster that wants to eat your liver. <sighs> Hey ho, near death flirting. We don't work for bias. I can tell. A yeah, solid compliment, Burn. You do not want me to start spilling secrets, Denise. Sea Tech Astronomy, Denise. Kind of getting a Skeksis vibe. Dark Crystal? So, you know, like a terrifying Muppet. We gotta get you off this plane! What? <laughs> Love that what. It's so intense, but also funny. Appropriate reaction. But of course, not a moment's rest. Look, I usually try to jump over stuff like this because this is wins, not uh, bads. But when they pop out of the plane and my five-year-old says, why aren't they wet? I have to take a win off. It's not a movie ruiner or anything. He, it's not like he really cared. I think I said they ran to the back of the plane. But sometimes you gotta make the effort. Hand them a towel or something. No one is affected by water, but also, as Harrison Ford once said to Mark Hamill, asking a similar question about their dryness after the trash compactor scene, hey kid, it ain't that kind of movie. People are looking at your hair, we're all in big trouble. A DNA sample, do you have it? Biasin's responsible for the locust epidemic. I'm, I'm here to help you. Again, can't stand how matter of fact Ramsey is all the time because it's not in an unknowing way, he's just the best. <laughs> Never mind, that's a Skeksis, just without the cloak. Not sure what was wrong with the deer, might just not fear an herbivore? How could you know the Therizinosaurus was an a-hole? Either way, it makes for a really intimidating scene. Therizinosaurus just killing to kill, or maybe for the foliage. Nah, slice me up, Therry. I ain't going to that water. Okay, this is also up there with scariest moments. I'm sorry, did they crash in Thra? Nope. <laughs> Perfect response. <laughs> Julia said out loud, yes, thank you, when Kayla started screaming. No one ever screams, and so many of us would. Scaredy cat representation, I guess. Yeah, didn't need to, but he probably deserved it. What an ass. Prometheus got gored. So will you, you rapacious rat bastard. Rapacious rat bastard. Now that is an insult. You take a big word and you smash it with a more juvenile insult and magic happens. You lecherous lame brain desiccated ding dong. Subjugating silly billy. Well, look at that. Rexy taking a free meal again. Do you guys have kids? No, I, I do too. With him. Yeah, we were all pissed about it too. The real Jim and Pam of the Jurassicverse. If your friends make it out, if when they make it out. Yes, sir. I think it's funny how much weirder Jeff has gotten since his fly days. Like he's just the walking embodiment of a quirk. You did good. Yeah. Well, actually, it's a complete disaster. But thanks. Modesty. <laughs> I mean, also, nope. But Grant's reaction was right on the money. And fun fact, Dimetrodonts aren't even dinosaurs. It's closer to mammals than to reptiles. Neat! Ian really took the everything is 1984 now meme to its furthest conclusion. <laughs> ah, we know that noise. Nedry should have known that noise. <laughs> Badass good guy just barely stopped the ink from spraying. Go ahead. Mendacious, meanie, fatuous, Fox lover, pusillanimous poopy head. I really do love how absolutely bananas this movie is. That's bananas. See, Malcolm gets it. You can't keep me here, you're not my mother. It's my parents! Aw, just goes to show that kids will always say the most hurtful things, even if they know the truth. I'm a sucker, I know, but letting us have a quick moment for the OG cast to meet the new cast while the OG theme plays? I'll clap like a seal because I have a soul, and here's a hint, even if you hate the movie overall, you can still like specific things. That's a good way to make your baddie scary, like a Quiznos commercial. Yeah, okay, that also works. But look, I know it's scary, but who else gets to say they were inside a dino's mouth and live to talk about it? Hey! Still a self-sacrificing hero. Although I think you just made him a dragon and that seems worse. Well, that's a bunch of teamwork. If only Dan Forrester had a snowmobile to throw at it. Big fan, I read your book. Well, book on tape. 
You trained raptors. Yeah. <laughs> game recognized game, heroes meeting heroes. Jurassic World? Not a fan. Shut up, Ian. Boo, how are we supposed to celebrate his workout routine? Hey, maybe Dodgson put a 1993 tracking beacon on it. You set me up? I gave you every opportunity I did not have. I, we have an understanding, and you do not break that. I would not break this. I'm not you. All those words from Dodgson, and Ramsey only needed three to win. Who's this now? Beta. Blues baby. And you gave her a name. How about that? His baseline of amusement, horror, and knowing everything he's worried about will in fact happen. Still get nightmares all the time. You? I like this acknowledgement between two badass good girls. Nobody said there'd be bugs. Ah, I might have been wrong. Maybe Giga knows something we don't. I mean, I bet it smells delicious in there. Was Ian cooking? You're smart enough to go straight for the throat. Alan, you saw them use a dude as bait, so that's an understatement. And yes, I will eventually get to JP3. <laughs> okay, you won me over. That's funny. And I mean, he's clearly the real leader. Beta knows who to go after. This movie really does have everything. <laughs> Dutchin's main character trait is that he startles easily. What? God. Oh, God. Hey. What's your story? <laughs> Their story is hungry. Also, fitting that he dies the same way as Nedry, like couldn't escape the Dilophosaurus fate 30 years later, Final Destination style. That's surprisingly adorable. Him? Not him. Not him. It's always him. True. Him and Rexy, two main characters in the series. Was that a dinosaur on your shoulder? We've come a long way, Ian. Maybe you should think twice about what you said about Jurassic World earlier? One last look at a biggin. Not only is she doing the logo thing, but Rexy has been a friend way more than an enemy at this point. No need to even be scared. Kind of got a Godzilla thing going on. Oh, gotcha. You gotta have a final dino fight. Otherwise, why are we here? The cloning plot? The locusts? Redheads? I get it. I like redheads, too. I mean, you've had it coming for a while, woo. Skeksis throwing down. Hey, just like that time Lex was being an absolute idiot, shining a light in her eyes, it makes her pupil constrict. Only this time, no one is being just the stupidest idiot ever like that other time. I think the deeper meaning here is that the Therizinosaurus killed the deer for Rexy because they're together, and Giga went and stole it. I mean, they clearly planned the sandbush out. Jokes aside, they're all here because they were all called back with that brain electrical signal thing. <laughs> And our all-time longest reigning hero saves the day once more. I am coming with you. Love, finally. The payoff to such a confusing relationship. A real sigh of happiness moment. Aw, these do. I'm getting used to it. My gut says nope, we'd never adapt. But my brain says that as someone who remembers pre-internet days, the fact that everyone doesn't have their own saddled up dino already is bizonkers. Aw, T-Rex family buddies. Could be Big Edie and Little Edie. <laughs> Clever girl. If we're going to survive, we'll have to trust each other, depend on each other, coexist. Ah, so we're screwed. JK, JK, it's a sweet message to close on, and we can do it, folks. We can, we can do it. Okay, now finally the Brachiosaurus actually reaches higher. Thank you for correcting that fatal flaw from the OG. But also, can we have this? I'd like to have this world. Just no predators, you know? My biggest complaint about Dominion is that there are unending possibilities with the premise dinosaurs in our world. And by no means do I hate where this movie went, I just want more, I guess? Locusts aren't dinosaurs, and even though they are kind of cool for a minute, the swarms are scary, but like just search and replace locust for Compsognathus and now the movie is about dinos again. Copies can mess with food. I mean, if you really want to stick with the food supply, say it's been a few years, the Lysine contingency has completely failed, the predator's breeding is out of control, and dinosaurs are literally taking over the world again. Killing off our predator's food supply supply before turning on the predators themselves. I guess it becomes an apocalyptic movie at some point. And also, we apparently need a human villain now. Still, there wasn't really one in the OG. I don't know, just spitballing. However, if your problem happens to be no one would let them keep making dinosaurs, hoo <laughs> boy, lol, LMAO. The last few years have proven that we do not learn our lessons about anything. If there's money to be made, they'll make it and we'll be there. We'll watch Grandma get eaten by an Allosaurus and beg for more. But let's not go down that road. This movie is about escapism. Look, legacy sequels are not easy, and a lot of the problems are front and center here. They did a pretty good job of splitting up screen time for the OG versus the new cast, even if bringing them together created some odd moments, like trying to get seven people all in frame facing the camera. But to be fair, backing away from a Giganotosaurus is a decent enough reason. Ultimately, I love seeing the characters interact, so I'm good with it. All right, easy, Rambo. And I couldn't be happier that Laura Dern, Sam Neill, and Jeff Goldblum came back. Watching the original and then Dominion back to back can be a little jarring, if only because of how good the three of them look. I'm trying to steer clear of objectification territory here, but Hachi, wow, wow, those three are keeping it tight. 
In general, this film touches on a lot of different storylines that, on their own, would have been fun movies. Bryce Dallas Howard is doing her dinosaur liberation thing, Chris Pratt horse back at Dino Wrangling, even the entirely over-the-top underground Dino Black Market could have a whole film around it. I understand why we landed back in familiar territory, but it also explains why many people were disappointed by this film. But if you can get past your expectations, you can watch some fun performances and killer set pieces. The Raptor motorcycle chase is a fantastic spin on something we'd seen before. Two much more original scenes were the plane getting ripped apart by the Quetzalcoatlus and the Pyro Raptor chasing them under the ice. Two scenes that Jude really loved, whatever that's worth. And then Malcolm trying to figure out the code for the door is precisely what I've always loved about these movies. Both terrifying and wildly entertaining, with comedy battling the ever-encroaching death. That's one of the things that made Jurassic Park so special, so many competing emotions at all times. Am I excited to see dinosaurs? Of course. Are they scarier than I ever imagined? Yup. Is it also a little funny when people get eaten? Somehow, yes. Does that make me a sadist or just a kid at heart, undetermined? Not to get all empty words that sound meaningful, because I truly believe what I'm about to say, but Jurassic Park opened our minds to an entirely new world of possibilities. And we have these three to very much thank for that. Yeah, yeah, Spielberg too. But picking up that legacy was no small task, and Chris and Bryce added their own new personalities to the world without being clones of what came before, and Dominion didn't shy away from that fact. Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler are superheroes in this universe, and Ian Malcolm is a rock star. It's their world, we're just living in it. I've said it more or less a few times now, but just to be clear, I will do The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3. Both hold a special place in my heart. But that's almost it for the year. If we can get our act together, I'll have one more EGA video on a recent, shorter, Christmas-themed movie. So I will most likely see you again. Either way, happy holidays.